Peter Gammons joining me here on The Rich Eisen Show. How are you, Peter? I'm doing very well, Rich. But actually, mm -hmm. um, today, since North Carolina is playing in the championship ah. game, I'd probably say that the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the uh, NCAA championship basketball game, but that only happens when Carolina is in the finals. So you're a Tar Heel, <laughs> right, Peter? Yes, I am. You're a Tar Heel when it comes down. So do you want to break down tonight's NCAA championship game for no, us? No, I'm just going to enjoy it. I, I, I must say this. I mean, I um, I wouldn't be where I am today if it weren't for Dean Smith, who took me under his wing as a student and uh, um, was in incredible as a, as a mentor to me. And uh, when I watched that Marcus Page uh, touch, uh, slap pass mm -hmm. the other night, I thought, you know what? This guy represents exactly what Dean Smith was. So he's my favorite, one of my favorite players of all time. So I passionately hope they win more than normal. Then, you know, Roy Williams can pass Dean Smith in a number of national championships with a yes. nut cutting, Peter. What do you it, think about can, that? can, but it's, it's, um, um, well, those things do happen. I mean, Dean, uh, Roy's done a terrific job, but Dean, Dean, Dean built that program where he took over from Frank McGuire. They were on probation. Um, and, it was a long way back when I was first there. I mean, they were limited to three scholarships a year. So um, what Dean built in a very short period of time was pretty remarkable. His, his, um, his legacy was really good. And, and one of the things when we were starting the, the capital campaign to, to uh, raise the money to rebuild a baseball stadium there, um, uh, B.J. Surhoff and I were very fortunate to have Dean ask us to sit with him uh, at a uh, at a football game up in up in uh, the athletic director's box, uh, so that's a, a very fond memory that BJ and I have shared together uh, for a long time. How did before we move on from this? How did Dean Smith take you under his wing, Peter? How did that happen? He just he, I was uh, I was writing for the the Daily Tar Heel, and he just took a liking to me. At one time, Frank uh, Frank DeFord was there uh, to do a story on for Sports Illustrated, and he uh, insisted I come and sit. While Frank interviewed him, so I could under, I could learn a little bit about how to interview. And uh, he did things like that. He used to uh, once in a while he'd walk by me and say, "Yeah, you could have done better than that writing. I mean, you, you're better than that." And it's, it's just for some reason, he and he really pushed me to to uh, to go into the business. So uh, I owe a great deal to him. No kidding. Was he a baseball guy too, Peter? Oh, he loved baseball. He was a shortstop at the University of Kansas. <laughs> Would he have range? Was he was he was he rangy? Was he a utility well, guy? Was he a slap time, hitter? I don't know. I think, but he did love he did love baseball. It's, it's interesting how many guys. See, Mike Shashevsky loves baseball as well. A passionate Cubs fan. I mean, uh, it would be kind of fun to see him at the World Series this year. Ah, um, yes. But now now, now you're getting to it because I know so many <laughs> Cubs fans are so nervous, Peter, right now because they're front runners. I mean, the Cubs are front runners. Cubs need, are expected now. To do this is that a fair? Is that a? Do you think that's fair? Yeah, they they are. I mean, they they had those t-shirts embrace the target this spring that they wore. Joe Madden is so good he at is. sort of deflecting it all. Don't be afraid of it. You're going to get it. The, what it is, it's it's they they get so much media attention. I get that. Uh, I I also get why the Cardinals, who have been such a great franchise, resent the publicity that the Cubs get. Even though the Cubs did beat them in the in the uh, NLDS last year, but you know that's all part of it. The, the Cubs players, uh, Joe, the front office have stayed pretty silent about this, except to say, "Yeah, we think we're good," but you know they, they never go, oh, "But we're going to win." But it's it's just a natural thing when a team becomes the the the, uh, uh, the media's uh, hot topic. Uh, they, they naturally get resented, and how they deal with it will be interesting. I don't think they'll have a problem because it's, for such a young team, they're very, very mature. But it'll be fascinating to watch as the year goes along because I'm pitching. I mean, for instance, I thought it was great that baseball opened the season with the two winningest teams of the last three years, the Cardinals and the Pirates playing. Yeah, I mean, and yeah, yeah. You, you get that in the vision. You've got. Um, you know, you've got a lot of really good teams in the National League, which we, uh, I think will be a very interesting race, but I think the Cubs are going to be, as long as their pitching holds up, will be extremely dangerous. Yeah, but yet, Peter, they, they started in the middle of the afternoon on Sunday, and I, I know you're active on Twitter. You, you see it. WrestleMania 32 got more buzz than last night's Mets-Royals game. What can baseball do to make opening day 
as big as any other sports opening day, Peter? Um, well, I mean, I, I hope it's bigger than the NHL or the NBA opening days, which nobody ever knows where they are, when they are. But um, I, I just think that, that they continually have to work at um, the, the promotion of the really good young players in the game and, and, and what good guys they are. I mean, you know, when you have Mike Trout and Bryce Trout, uh, Harper and um, McCutcheon and guys like that, that they, ha- they have to sink into fans. I mean, this should be a good year because I think that in the American League, there are probably 10, 11, 12 teams that think they can make the playoffs. In the National League, there are about five that don't think they can, but at the same time, there are a, the, 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 there are about 20 teams across baseball that think they have a chance to make the postseason. I think there tends to be such a disconnect now between – the hype of spring training and the reality of the season opening that it creates a little bit of problem. But again, it's the selling of the players baseball for many years. I think until this um, commissioner took over tended to talk about, Oh, they were better in 40 years ago. They were better. The good old days, all that kind of thing. I think that's changed dramatically the last couple of years, but it hasn't sunk in to the younger audience. And, And that's something that, it just can't be done overnight. Uh, I think it has to be built up over about a four or five year period. Well, the problem in my mind, Peter, is that the sport, you know, the national pastime as it as it was once known and many people still fondly recall it as that. It's not a national sport. It's region that you care about the team in your region, maybe in your division. And that's about it in the fact that now, you know, because obviously when the NFL is, is a model that that I think everybody wants to follow, that's a national sport that used to be regional. Maybe fantasy has something to do with it. I don't know. But trying to nationalize this and then have one of the names, players, the faces that you mentioned in Bryce Harper, a national from Washington, saying that the sport is tired. Uh, how does that play into all of this? Well, well first of all, I mean, and, and actually, I sort of agree with Harper because he was reacting to the way, oh, people shouldn't flip bats, they shouldn't be emotional. Um, you know, they should be like statues. No, I, you know, I don't buy into that at all. Um, and, and I agree with him on that. Um, but um, it's a very different sport in that it's nationally televised as opposed to regionally televised. Mm-hmm. Um, baseball isn't a gambling sport, and that certainly um, takes away from it. It's just not a sport that makes any sense to gamble on. There aren't, you know, there are lines on games, but Nobody understands what they are. And I think that that's a part of our culture that baseball isn't going to be able to overcome. And I don't think, I, I don't see baseball unless this whole injury factor becomes so great. And I, and I don't think that's going to happen in, uh, in the next year um, that it's going to be very difficult for baseball to overcome college football and professional football. But at the same time, I think they can if, if they allow their young players to be themselves, I mean, really, who cares if Jose Batista flips his bat when he hits one, the most dramatic home run of the entire season? Um, I mean, I, I went to a bunch of games in Cuba when I was there uh, for over two weeks in 1999. One of the things I love most about watching the Cubans is they all play like I did when I was 10 years old. And, you know, the game should be for uh, be played the way kids do not the way they do in slow pitch softball. And I think that's been a problem for the game. I mean, I think the criticism of Batista, of Harper, of some of the Cuban players, this spring training by, by a Hall of Famers, just sort of, it, it brought it back to, oh boy, we have to go back to the, to the, and once again, tell our public that they are paying $150 for a seat, but these players aren't as good as they were in the 1950s which, of course, is hogwash. Peter Gammons joining me here on the Rich Eisen Show. In the few minutes I have left with you, let's talk about what's going on on the diamond, the actual sport itself. Uh, who's the front runner in the American League? Who do you think? I think it's, to- I think it's Toronto. I really do. I mean, I, um, they have to find ways um, to, make, to, to preserve... Um, they have to be very careful about preserving the innings of Marcus Stroman and Aaron Sanchez, who 
not only their best power pitchers, but the two guys who could pitch best in October. So they have to limit Sanchez to about 150, 160 innings during the season. Stroman to about 180. But one of the things I think that they did very well this winter was go out and get a lot of pitching depth uh, to be able to bridge the gap, fill in a bunch of starts in July and August, and they have a deep bullpen to start with. So I, I think, I mean, they, they did score like 100 27 more runs than anybody else in the American League next year. They have a catcher, second, short, and third. They have gold glove uh, players at, at defensively in the middle of the field. I think they're going to be really good. I, I really believe that. And in the National League, the team uh, that could, you know, derail the Cubs outside of their division, because I know you already mentioned the, the, the Pirates and the Cardinals as stout opponents in, the, in their division. Which, one, which well, one do you think has the biggest threat? In the I think either the I think the Mets or the Nationals. I mean, I I, I, I love the Mets pitching. Um, the only thing is, we still are looking at um, a, start, a starting staff that has three or four guys that have had Tommy John surgery in the past. Are they going to hold up and be healthy this season? Uh, and Washington, I think in Strasburg's farewell and and Scherzer coming back with the depth they have in their starting rotation, and you know they're not going to have what, 1,300 player games missed by injuries again this year. I think they're two really interesting teams. I thought Arizona had a real chance, but the A.J. Pollock injury, I mean, he's one of those seven, eight best players yeah. in the National League. If he's out for the year, that's a terrible loss and for them. And two days I'm not before. i sure they can overcome that. And the final weekend before opening day, I mean, he's, he, he, hurts his, he hurts his elbow. I was going to bring that up, too. I mean, because there's Granke in, in Arizona. Goldschmidt is maybe the best player nobody knows about. And then the Dodgers have a payroll that's like a gross national product. And, and it's, a, it's an even year for the Giants. You don't think anybody in the NL West can? I, I think the Giants, I mean, I thought Arizona could win. I just don't know if they can, if they can win without um, without AJ. It's it's possible because I like the depth of their starting pitching, and I like being able to have Bradley and, and, and Drebeck coming back in the middle of the season uh, out of the minor leagues. But the Giants, I mean, it all depends. I mean, I, I just hope that Bumgarner's foot is all right. He heard it in spring training, and and. You never know. Okay, he's so tough. He would never admit that he was hurt. I think Strasburg will get better as the year goes along. I think Matt Cain will get better as the season goes along. And you know they were. Um, they're still a really good offensive team to be fourth in the league in in runs. Playing in that ballpark tells you just how good they are in terms of situational hitting, particularly Posey was just about the lowest strikeout rate in baseball. So. They're going to be really interesting too, and the Giants are just. There's something magical about them. They they just. It's you're around them. There's a there's a calm about them, that is really unusual. I've always thought that great, the best athletes are those who, always seem as if they're, just completely nonplussed by whatever is around them. And the Giants were always that way. It's not cockiness. It's just. Um, self-assurance, and they have that better than any team in the National League. Last question for you, Peter. I could talk to you all day. Um, last question. Mike Trout as the MVP for 2016 in the American League. Do I use pen or pencil to write that down? Um, I would use pencil for this reason. Does he have enough around him? Um, I, I think that they have some pretty good players. The question is, will they have enough guys on in base in front of him and Will they have enough hitting behind them and if, if Albert Pujols isn't healthy? So, but, I mean, I think he certainly goes into the season as the favorite. And I have to tell you, Rich, I mean, if you're around him, if you're around the clubhouse, um, this is a person who has no perception of himself as a star. I mean, he and Joe Carl Stanton, um, as their teammates will tell you, both think they're utility infielders in the way they act and around their, their, their teammates. And that, that's, that's one of the nicest things in the game. Peter, you're the best. Have a good time tonight watching your Tar Heels. Oh, I will, Rich. Thanks a lot. Always love chatting with you. That's Peter Gammons. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.